Thank you. It's an honour and it's a privilege to uh, be able to share here with you. I don't know how long I've got to share here, but uh, what I want to tell you is I want to tell you the truth. God's word is the truth. It tells us very clearly and very plainly. It was a verse that was sent in 2 Peter 2, 9, which says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. We are a privileged people. Why? Because God has chosen us as his people. And that's why we are a privileged people. We are a nation of people who come through great trials, great trials of persecution. Let me just take you back here, I'm just going to have a little bit of history. When the white man settled, he came into this land, the first thing he done was to take his gun and he shot a lot of our people. Now that history is not being told. You got up here, the voice, the tree, and you've got the truth. Now the truth is never being told. And that's why it's always a problem for these leaders of ours to come to a place where they will recognize and acknowledge the past. What has been done when that ship came in across the ocean and into the mouth of the Swan River. What happened there and then has never been told. But I'm just going to tell you just a little bit. But I'm going to take you to another people. A people who have also have come through great trials. And it's only because of God's hand that has been upon these people. God has kept us. And we are here today to tell the truth. We are here to acknowledge that this is Nyungar country. It will always be Nyungar Buddha. Our ancestors have trodden along these pathways. Therefore, we drive today in a car, but they walk with their families. We've come a long way as a people, as Aboriginal people. And to begin this conversation of who we really are, where we've come from, we've got to talk. And we've got to tell the truth. 
You know, today we have so many, and I'm going to say this, we have so many people who say they come from a certain place. <laughs> but the truth has to be told where we really belong. Where is our Buddha? Right across this nation, our people, alongside of our white brethren and sisters, must tell the truth. This land, it will always belong to us. Even though it had been overtaken by European people, we will always belong to this land as Aboriginal people. No matter where we come from, the land will always belong to us. Why? Because we've grown up as children. We've walked our feet and been into that budget, into the earth. We've kicked it, we've played in it, and therefore the earth will always, this country will always belong to Aboriginal people. Though the white man has come in and he's taken that from us. In actual fact, he never negotiated. What he really said was, blacks are useless. And that's why in a lot of our past people's lives, they poison a lot of water holes. And that is the truth. That is the truth. The white man's gone and he's poisoned their water holes. They come, they have a drink. They're noich. They're finished. They're dead. A little song that uh, Slim Dusty used to sing about Trumney. That's a bit of history that had happened to our people across this nation. And we need to wangi. We need to talk. We need to tell. what has happened. I want to read you a few verses in 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. God has looked after us as a people. God has taken care of us. He's provided for us. Our young people called God Marmon. Marmon who walked and who looked after our people. He kept them and he walked with them. Our young language is a beautiful language. 
Aboriginal language, no matter where we come from, it is a beautiful language. Let the truth be known. Garnan means truth. It means truth. To talk the truth. The land, Buja. None belong to this Buja. I belong to this land. And this land belongs to me. The voice is that we need to walk things together. We need to talk together. Talk about things. There's so much division. As I've always said to my people, if you can agree on one thing, you can agree there on a lot of things. The main things that matter is coming together, talking together, agreeing together. You know, when you look at the children of Israel, they were in a land that didn't belong to them. And yet God cared for them. God protected them. Until the day when God had his man to lead them out of that land. Into the land of milk and honey. Into the land where God had for them. Just like he's taken care of us as Aboriginal people. From the first day of colonization, he's kept us. What? He's walked with us. Okay. He's wandering with us. He's talked with us. He spoke with us. And he's led us. He's always provided our merit. He's always provided food for us as a people. Just like he provided the food for the children of Israel. When they began that long journey, he provided for them. He gave them water. He cared for them. And God has cared for us over the hundred thousands of years. He's looked after Aboriginal people in this land of Australia. God gave this land to Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people were first on this very soil. This land of Australia, right across, right up to the very top, Aboriginal people walk this land. And Paul assures us here, twice over, verses 6 to 11, that these things happen unto them as types, that is the children of Israel, or as examples unto us upon the ends of the ages are to come. And we like them of old, we're all pilgrims. We're all pilgrims and strangers. Though I say this earth is ours, we're still, in actual fact, our pilgrims and strangers in this earth. Because when we die, we cannot take it. 
we go back to the earth. Our bodies go back to the earth. But we cannot take it. They had the shadow that led them and protected them. But we have the realities of God's Holy Spirit for our protection and for our guidance. They had in verse 1 it says, All our fathers were under the cloud. It was a cloud of shelter by day, and it was a fire by night, as their protection and their guidance. The cloud was a symbol and evidence of the divine presence of Almighty God with Israel. Which in itself is a mystery. When you think of that cloud taking these people across that land, when it moved, they moved with it. When it stopped, they stopped with that cloud. They were all under it. But God was in that cloud. God himself was in that cloud. And it, the Bible says they were all baptized into one name of Moses. Their leader and lawgiver. They were in family. They were led by the God created crowd just as we are led by his unerring word today. And to move without that cloud was to go in their own name, was to go on their own, in their own wisdom and in their own need and strength. Which would mean for them Confusion and failure. And this is what it means for us when we choose our way and act without the Almighty, without the, the authority of God, the path becomes confused. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. It was only as they believed and followed the cloud that they were able to go into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. They were able to cross across over that water on dry ground. Because they believe and because they trusted the cloud. And it's because we believe and act on the word of the Lord that we can pass from death into life. From this place of bondage into the liberty of the land of promise. And we are to keep on believing and to keep our eyes always on God Himself. We take our eyes off God, we begin to lose our way. The Bible also said that they did all eat the same spiritual meat. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And those who follow the word of God will always be fed by the bread of God. The bread of life. Jesus said, 
I am the living bread which came down from heaven in John 6, 48 and 51. This manna then is typical of Jesus, of Christ, who came down from heaven as the bread of life. The manna that Israel ate on their journey was like Christ himself. Of course, all bread is God's gift. Whether it comes out of the earth or out of the heavens. But the wilderness could do nothing by way of producing it. This land of ours can do nothing in producing the wheat to grow without God's hand. In his plan. He sends the rain. He sends the sunshine. Even before the farmer sows the wheat. I used to work on a farm. In those days you had to carry the bag of wheat on your shoulder to the combine, which was called then. And you had to throw it up onto the top of the combine and put it in the combine. Then you had to carry the bag of super on your shoulder from the truck and put it on the combine and put it in there. And then you were able to take off on the tractor. And that wheat and super would go down into the soil. Sometimes the mud would clog it up and you'd have to get out and you'd have to clean it all out, clean the tube out so that the wheat and the super can run down freely into the ground. And then when it's all finished and done with, the farmer looks for the rain. He looks at the sky he looks where the clouds are, if there's any rain. Any rain in sight. But our Heavenly Father, who knows, sends the rain. And He sends the sunshine. Come summer, then you take the harvester out and you harvest that crop. For in that harvester the grain is all separated from the chaff. And it's put in the bins ready to go into town to the wheat belt put in beads and eventually it's all taken out of those beads and it's set down here where our bread then comes from. So God knows what we need long before we can even think about. What Christ has to give is just what we all need. That which exactly suits us. The forgiveness of sins and His grace to help in every time of need. And being satisfied with His abundance. Are you satisfied with what God actually gives you? You know, so many times man thinks, oh, he yearns 
He earns it by the sweat of his brow. But, in actual fact, it's God who is there providing that opportunity where he earns the very crust of bread. Where he earns his pay. From the youngest to the oldest. Those without a price. The rich and the poor. Alike need. God's bread of life. The very richest man today, the very richest woman today in this land of ours, needs God. Though they may admit, no, they don't need God. God can, in actual fact, just wipe everything off the slate and leave them. God is a generous and a caring God. Christ is the living bread from heaven. And he's offered throughout my years I've met many people who do not talk the truth from this one. They speak with four tongues. We need to speak. Tell people how much God cares for them. Show God. Show Christ in our life, in our character, in our being. People need to see. Not Jim Hayden, but they need to see. Jesus. In there. They need to see Jesus. This land of Australia needs God today. It needs no one else but God today. Will you be one who will tell and speak the truth? Tell them that God loves them. I've traveled many miles. And I'll say this. I've traveled many miles across this land. And told my people of God's love. Never be paid as a minister. I've been a minister well over 50 years. I've had to work. I've had to burn the can at both ends. I've had two heart attacks. But I'm still here today to tell the truth of God's life. Amongst our own black people, there's too much division. 
when we begin, begin to agree, things will begin to happen. Only to me. God bless you. Thank you.